Okay, awesome. So my name is Justin Chalfant. I am the founder uh, here at Patch My PC. A uh, little background on us. Uh, we do third-party application management and patching for Config Manager. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at today is going through the setup of our product to show you exactly what things uh, look like to get configured in about 30 minutes to show how simple the setup can be here. Now, um, how do we want to handle questions, Anoop? Like, I'm, I'm totally fine if we, uh, if we just interrupt me if anyone has a question there and you just want to relay it. Does that work? I, I think we can take the questions uh, at the last, if that's okay with you, okay. I feel. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. So we're going to basically go through our product, show you exactly what it looks like to set it up. So a uh, little background on the lab that we have going on here. If I go look at the all software updates, there we go. So we can see that we don't have any third-party updates coming in today. So just the very basic setup, nothing pre-configured. And if we jump over to our applications node, we also do not have any third-party apps created. So just a pretty clean environment. This would be just like uh, if you were setting up this today for the first time, it's basically what we're going to go through here. So uh, jumping over to our website. So if you wanted to try out our product, uh, the first thing you would just go grab our MSI. So this is a small, about five megabyte service that would run on your software update point. So this would get installed at whatever the top level SUP is within your configuration manager environment. Now within my lab, things are pretty basic. So we've got uh, just everything running on a single site server. So for example, our software update point is co-located with the site server. In the case that your SUP was remote, you would simply install the MSI on that remote software update point site system. So uh, just kicking this off, we'll go ahead and install that product. And here we go. Uh, let me just minimize Teams. And we'll go ahead and get that launched. Now, as far as the initial configuration, so you have two options when you uh, are evaluating our product. So we, you can either get a full access 30 day trial that uh, you can submit on the same trial download page that the MSI is. You could submit a form for full access to every single product and all the features that we support. So you would just put in your company name and email, and then we would email you with a unique ID that would give you access to test everything out. Now, if you don't want to send in any form or any data, we do have this option called a trial mode where anybody can download and enable trial. The only difference with the public trial is that you're going to be limited to a smaller subset of about six products within the uh, public trial mode, where if you uncheck that and if you did a 30 day full access trial, you would be able to test out all the products within our catalog. Um, but jumping back into kind of the prerequisite. So the only real thing that you have to have pre-configured is the WSUS signing certificate. So if any of you guys have ever used uh, third-party patching, whether that's with a uh, system center update publisher, or maybe even some of the new native console stuff, uh, one of the prerequisites that you have is a certificate. And this is going to be used to ensure that your clients trust the tool that is publishing these third-party updates. So since they're not coming directly from Microsoft, you're not gonna be able to use Microsoft as kind of that authority. So you need to have a certificate in place. Now, um, there were some big improvements in Config Manager 1806 current branch around the automation of the certificate creation. So uh, within 1806 or newer, within your software update point, the first step that you could do here is if you didn't wanna handle manually creating your cert and deploying it, you can simply enable this option on your software update point to let configuration manager manage it. So what's gonna happen is after we enable that option, the next time that our software update point is synchronized, if we look at the WSync manager log directly from our tool, we can open that. What we're gonna see here is that the WSync manager is gonna automatically create that cert for us. So here in a second, that's gonna kick in. We're gonna see that it did not detect there was a cert created and then it goes and generates the cert for you. So what would happen now is if we come back into our config man console and go look back at the software update point, 
we now have our WSUS signing certificate automatically created from SCCM without having to do anything external through PKI or generating it manually. So it was a really big step to help eliminate some of the manual things that you would have had to do where you may have to create GPOs to, to deploy your certs to clients where now you can handle it all natively in the console. So once Configuration Manager manages the cert, um, there's one other client setting that you can enable if you just want SCCM to automate all the certificates. Um, so on the client setting, uh, this actually uh, first started with 1802 current branch. There's this new setting to enable third-party updates on the client. So what this will do, this will tell your clients that they can trust the third-party patches coming from WSUS that we're publishing into Config Manager and also install the certificate that SCCM created. Now, if you're not on that build or newer, it's pretty easy to um, generate a cert directly in our tool. The only difference there is that instead of using uh, Config Manager to deploy the cert, you would need to export that file to a GPO. Um, but in our case, uh, since SCCM just made the cert, if I come and reopen our publishing tool, we can now see that we're reading the certificate directly created from SCCM. So you can now handle all the prereqs directly from your console if you're on 1806 or new. Now, uh, let's go ahead and just jump right into the publishing. So um, we have basically two different configurations within our tool. So we have uh, software updates. So that's going to be published into the SCCM console as a third-party update. So this would handle very similarly to Microsoft updates where it can be used to update outdated versions of third-party apps that already exist on your clients. So it could be used to just patch those old apps. Now, in addition to the software updates that we're gonna look at, we do also have an application feature. So this will allow you to create third-party apps within a native SCCM application where you can use that for your initial deployments through task sequences or collection deployments. So we'll go through both of these options. The reason that we added the application feature is because updates didn't really cover everything. Because for example, if you um, still had to get the app out there initially, so you would have to package it up. And then uh, what would often happen for the customers that we were getting feedback from is that they may have outdated applications that they're initially deploying. And then it would still take a while for the updates to kick in. So now by creating uh, uh, updates and applications, we can make sure that the base install of those apps stay up to date that you're using in your sequences or collections to initially deploy the app, as well as use software updates to manage those machines that get deployed when new versions of those apps come out using the software update feature. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in and show you some of the products here. Now, with regards to the number of products that we have, uh, if I jump over to our supported products webpage, so we have around 300 and some third-party applications. So you can download all the apps if you wanted to in an Excel format, and you can basically see everything that we support here. You can also expand each product to see all the different versions from this web page as well. Um, now, another key thing to point out is that if you have an application within your environment that we don't support today, we have a user voice where you can come in and you can submit new requests for products just like the configuration manager user voice, it, it, it's a very similar process where you can upvote existing features and app requests or create your own if there's an app that we don't support today. We do also use this for all our feature requests. So for example, if you want to see what we've been up to, um, our roadmap is available at patchmypc.com forward slash roadmap. Um, so if you just want to see kind of the new features that we've been implementing, as well as some of the things that we're working on, you can actually come in here and kind of check out our roadmap to see all these different things that we've been shipping in the past six months or so. We can also see uh, in the, the dark blue color, any new products that we've added, they will also be included on our roadmap. So you can kind of see how often we're adding new products based on our customer feedback. Um, so basically all those products are gonna correspond to the selection here. So this, this is very similar to the way that within your software update point, you can go and choose third party or Microsoft updates. The only thing is here, you're choosing the third party updates that you wanna push into WSUS and Config Manager. Now, before I actually start enabling some third party products, I'm gonna cover some of the customizations that you can apply at the all products level to all child products. So one pretty helpful customization that you can apply is we have the ability to automatically close any third party app processes prior to doing the update. 
So for example, if you don't want the app to be in use, you have the ability to automatically close it so that you can ensure that it uh, updates successfully. Now, if you don't wanna be that intrusive and auto close on your users, you can also choose to skip the update if the app is in use. So that would make it so that during the next software update scan cycle, it would retry the update and check if the application is closed um, in that case. Now, a lot of products can still work pretty well while they're in use. You might just get a pending restart like a cumulative update from Microsoft, for example. Uh, another custom option, we can delete public desktop shortcuts. So for products like Chrome that put a public icon for all users, we can automatically delete that after the update is applied. We can also turn off self-update. So I'm gonna apply that globally to all products as well. And lastly, we have the ability to enable logging. So this one's actually pretty cool. The way that logging works is we'll automatically add the logging parameter for any EXE and MSI installers. Um, we'll, we'll create the log where you could actually troubleshoot the update or app install if you get a non-zero exit code, okay? So jumping back into that configuration, we've got a few things that we can configure here. So the first one is gonna be, where do you want all the logs to be saved? By default, we put it in a subfolder of CCM logs. But then we also have this secondary option that says, if we detect an update or an application install failed, meaning that it was a non-zero exit code, you can then copy only failed logs to like a secondary location like a UNC path so that you could centrally diagnose all the failures. Okay, so we applied all those globally. So for example, we can see that a bunch of these are gonna be enabled if we were to enable those products. Now, one very helpful thing that we can do is that since we do have a large list of products, about 300, you may not necessarily know what products you actually have within your environment. So one of uh, the features that we've implemented is the ability for you to come in and put your SCCM database server and your database name and we'll automatically query your hardware inventory for installed applications that we support. And we'll tell you how many of those products are installed. And then you can come in and choose whether you wanna enable all those detected products. So for example, if we wanted to enable everything that we detected, within a couple of clicks, we could select all, and then we could have everything enabled within a few seconds based on the inventory already in your environment. So let me just uncheck that. So also within this scan, we can export to a CSV file. So for example, if you were trying to evaluate our product for a customer and you wanted to know how many of the products that we support already exist, you could export this to a CSV and load it into something like Power BI. And you may be able to present this to management just to show the value of all the apps that you could patch initially. Now, one other helpful option is we have this feature where we can automatically run this scan every time we synchronize updates. And based on certain criteria, like for example, if you wanted to enable updates or applications based on them existing on 10 machines, for example, you could have products automatically enable even if it's future products that we add. So we could run this scan before our synchronization. And let's say that we added a new product in the future and you wanted to auto enable that without having to come back into our tool. You could enable this auto enable feature within this checkbox. Now for time's sake, we're just gonna do a couple products because we wouldn't have time to go publish all of these. So the first one we're gonna look at is Google Chrome. So we're gonna enable the 64 bit of Chrome for a software update. Now. Once we get to the product level, if we right click the individual product, you're gonna see that we actually get a few more options that were not available at the all products. So within each product, for example, you can add your own custom pre or post scripts. You can, um, oh, sorry about that. You can add a custom command line and you can add an MST transform file if it's a MSI based product. A few other things, you can also choose if you wanna exclude that product from ever being auto-enabled in that scan feature that we were just talking about. Okay. Now for Chrome, just as an example, I'm gonna go in and add a custom post update script. So we're gonna browse out to a script. And if you look at the formats here, we support batch files, PowerShell script, VB script, and you can even have an EXE or an MSI as a pre or post action within any of your updates or apps. So you can get very flexible if you ever have customizations that you wanna ensure that you apply within a software update. Now, just to show you an example, what this PowerShell script is going to do 
is it's going to set the, the home page to patchmypc.com and it's going to configure a few different uh, Chrome policies as well for the home page and password policy. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that and choose OK for that custom right click option. And we can now see that we're going to run that script as a post action. Okay. Uh, another product that will enable is Java 8 32-bit. So we can see that we do have those global options applied for Java. Now for Java, we do have one additional customization that's enabled by default. So if I click on this patch my PC define script, what we do for Java is we'll run a pre-action by default that will remove any old versions of Java runtime eight before the latest one installs. Because by default, the Java runtime installer does not remove older runtimes. So we'll make sure that you're only left with the latest one when we apply the update. Optionally, if you didn't want to apply our, our default script, you can opt out of that if you wanted to keep multiple versions, for example. Okay. Okay. okay, so that looks good. I think we'll just do Java in Chrome for the software updates. Um, what I'm going to do next is jump over to our application. So we can see that it's the same type of view where you can come in and you can enable these different products as an application within SCCM. So as far as the options go, it's pretty basic. So when you come in and configure this for the first time, you need to configure where your SMS provider is. So that's how we can talk to the site and create these apps. You need to configure a source folder for the root of all your application content that we're going to automatically create for you. And then there's also just a few various uh, options. Like for example, do you want to allow the app to be installed in a task sequence? So just different properties of the applications within SCCM. Uh, and then finally, one of the biggest features I would say is this is going to determine how you want to handle um, updates to applications that we create. So for example, let's say that we publish Google Chrome 75. Um, this this drop down is going to determine how you want to handle when version 76 comes out, for example. So by default, we're going to update any previous uh, app that we created in place. So what that means is that uh, we're going to automatically download the new content from Chrome. So we would download the latest MSI for version 76. We would then update the existing deployment type for that application. And then we would update your distribution points all for the same app. So what that means is that if you're using task sequences, for example, you wouldn't have to go change the applications whenever a new version comes out. You would always be able to deploy the latest version. Now, if, for example, you wanted to do more change control, you do have the ability to create a new application in SCCM whenever there's an update for that product. So for example, you would have an app for version 75, you would have a new app for 76, um, and then whenever you wanna deploy 76 for production, you would just need to replace your task sequence app install in that case. But by default, we update it in place so that you can always be deploying the latest one, but that's configurable based on how you may have changed control. Okay. Uh, and then the last option here is we can automatically distribute these apps to distribution point groups within your SCCM environment. Um, so that's pretty much what we have going on here. Now, as far as the products go for apps, you're gonna have all the same right-click options. And let's say that you went through and you enabled a bunch of products for update publishing. You can also choose this duplicate option. So what this will do is if we duplicate our products, it will copy all the products that you enabled for an update and auto enable those for an application as well. And you can even choose to automatically copy all the right click customizations for products as well. So I'm gonna choose yes to that. So we can see that once we duplicated them, we have Google Chrome enabled as an application and it's got all the same customizations like disabling updates, deleting shortcuts and setting the home page that could be used for the initial app deployment as well. Now for the applications, we're gonna go ahead and enable 7-Zip as an application too. So for example, I'm gonna enable 7-Zip here. Now, if we right click the applicate, oh, I'm sorry, one thing that I forgot to show you first is we can also automatically move any applications that we create to a subfolder within the SCCM console. So for example, if we come into the apps, we can see that we kind of have all these folders pre-created. So if you wanted all the apps created by Patch My PC to go into a separate folder, we can automatically define that globally for you based on this option here. Okay. Now, once we get into the product level, 
we can see that we have a few additional customizations that show up for applications. So these are things that are relevant for apps, but not necessarily software updates. So for example, you can choose to set the max runtime. So you can change it from the default one that SCCM sets to something custom. You can also add the deployment type uh, executable name. So if you wanted to prompt users that they need to close the app more gracefully and show them a UI, this is what's built into uh, 1702, where you can prompt them if the app needs to be closed. We can set that option. We can even set uh, the ability to move the application at the product level. So for example, if we wanted to move 7-Zip to its own folder that is custom, we can do that if we don't want it to go into the global folder that we defined. And then lastly, if you wanna set your own application name, that's gonna show up in the console, software center, or description, you can have your own customizations here if you need to. So for example, um, one of the reasons why some customers wanted this option is they were using uh, a MDT UDI task sequence, or some of them were using UI++. And the way that that maps to applications is it uses a custom app name. So they didn't want the application name to ever change. So we give you the ability, if you need to, where you can set an, a name for the application and it will stay the same in case you need it to stay for task sequences, for example. And then optionally, you can even add your own icon. So by default, we're gonna use the icon from the vendors, but if you ever wanted something custom, you could define that as a right-click option. Okay. okay, so that's the ones that we have. So we have Java and Chrome for our updates. We have Java, Chrome, and 7-Zip for our application. So I'm gonna jump over to our sync schedule tab, and I'm gonna go ahead and trigger a synchronization. So that's gonna get the Chrome, Java, and 7-Zip files downloading and publishing in the background while we review the rest. Um, so the sync schedule works very similar to the way that your software update point sync works. The only difference is that um, we're just gonna check our catalog to see if there's any new updates or applications for the products that you enabled. So by default, we are going to check every day. So since third-party updates don't really correspond to Microsoft updates, we usually release about three to four catalog updates per week. So for example, if we look at yesterday's catalog update, we can see that we released somewhere around 20 different third-party uh, application updates uh, uh, today. So we, for example, we can see that uh, Apple iCloud and iTunes both had security updates for that product. And we will also list out all the data within our RSS feed or email newsletter, for example. Um, so that's kind of why we sync every day by default because we're often releasing catalog updates daily. Now, for example, if you didn't wanna get new third-party updates that frequently, you could even set your sync schedule to only sync on Patch Tuesday, for example, if you only wanted to publish new apps and updates on a monthly basis. So it's completely configurable with how often you wanna publish. Uh, and then kind of the last option that we have that can be quite helpful is if we detect that we've published any new third-party updates to WSUS, we can trigger your software update point to synchronize so that you start seeing those new third-party updates in your console right away if you want to. Okay, okay. Uh, and then kind of the last thing that we have is our alerts. So this is gonna determine how you wanna get notified whenever you have new updates or applications that have been published real time within your environment. So for example, we've got our email alerts enabled, but we also have a Teams webhook enabled. So what we're gonna notice is that when we have these new updates publishing, we're gonna see some Teams notifications start to show up uh, within our UI here. So I think that we actually just got one. Yep, so we can see that uh, Chrome was published just one minute ago. Um, if we look at this, we can see that it was a security classification with a critical severity level. Within our Teams webhook, we can also see things like the release notes. So this is gonna be clickable where you can go directly out to the release notes of that product as well. In addition to that, we can also see things like uh, CVEs. So all the CVEs associated with the product are gonna be clickable and that's gonna take us out to the National Vulnerability Database where you can get more details about those fixes. 
Same thing for Java. And now we can see that we've also started to create our applications. So we had 7-Zip created as an application. We had Java created as an application and we had Chrome created as an application. So we got all these notifications real time uh, within our team's channel whenever we got these updates because we had that enabled here. Okay. Now, in addition to the team's alerts, just to show you what the email looks like, if I come over to Office 365, we can see that we also just got our email notification letting us know that we had our two new updates for Chrome and Java, and then we had our three applications created within our environment. These are also clickable, so if you only wanted to do emails and you're not using Teams, you could also use the release notes that are clickable. Um, let me just come back here. There we go. We also will show you the severity level and the classification, as well as the CVIDs will also be clickable from the email as well. All right, so that is pretty much the configuration for our service. So once you've configured all the products that you wanna publish in your sync schedule, you really don't have to use our tool. It's all gonna be automated and you would just get alerts whenever anything new comes out. Um, so once you get this configured, it just runs in the background. And the only thing that you would have to do is uh, work from your SCCM console, right? So you don't ever have to come back into our tool. You would simply get emails and Teams alerts whenever there's been anything new that's been published. And all your day-to-day -day work would be done through SCCM like you'd be doing today. So for example, if I refresh this console, we can now see that we've got our two third-party updates showing up right away because we enabled that option to synchronize our software update point whenever anything new is published. So these have already synchronized in and they're showing up as a software update. Now, um, as far as the deployment of these software updates go, it's going to be no different than Microsoft patches. So for example, if you were creating your software update groups manually, you could do something like, show me all the updates from patch my PC as a vendor. So you could come in here and run your searches every month, and then you could create your update groups if you do that using searches. Now, um, we can also automate all of this. So for example, if you're using ADRs, We've actually already created an ADR um, just for the demo where we're automatically deploying our third-party updates um, within this ADR. So for example, we're saying, uh, show me non-superseded updates that are critical security or an update from Patch My PC as a vendor. So if we preview this, we're going to see that Java and Chrome update showing up. So um, this ADR automatically ran after our software update point was triggered. So that's why these updates are already deployed because of this ADR. Now within the ADR for third-party updates, it's the same exact as Microsoft. So for example, we've got two pilot deployments and then we have our production deployment. Within here, you're gonna use all your existing collections. So nothing would change with the deployment. Um, you can choose your deadlines. You can choose whether or not you want your updates to show up in Software Center to be visible. And then also the same restart and maintenance window, all the same options would apply. So when that kicked off, it downloaded our third-party updates into a deployment package, and it's gonna make use of all your existing distribution points. So you don't have to worry about setting up any new servers for third-party updates because everything's native to SCCM functionality. So it also created our update group here. And we can see that those three deployments automatically got created as well, okay? Now, within the software here, we can also see that we have all our compliance data showing up too. So we can see that we have uh, one machine missing that update, for example. Now, what's also quite helpful is if we were to go in and copy one of these CVE IDs, okay, we'll copy that, you can also search different CVEs directly within the SECM console here. Try that again. Hmm. Just try to copy it from here. There we go. So for example, if we search different CVIDs that you may be tracking, we do expose all that data within the description field of the update. So for example, let's say that you're trying to find statistics on a CVID for like a Chrome update or really any update you could search that from the all software updates 
And you would be able to search against all the CVIDs that we've associated within an update because we include all of those within the description of the update. That's why it shows up here. So for example, we can see all the CVEs that will be searchable directly within your console because we include all of those within our metadata. Okay. okay. Uh, and then jumping over to our application. So um, we've also got our applications automatically created. So we can see Java and Chrome, and then we can even see that 7-zip app that was created in the, uh, the subfolder, as well as the custom name that we've created for that one, just as an example. Now, if we go ahead and look at Google Chrome here, we can see that we also fill in all the metadata that would show up within Software Center for you. So for example, things like the, the name, the documentation, the privacy policies, as well as description, keywords, and icon would all be filled out and ready to go. Now, let, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and deploy those three applications to the all users collection using a PowerShell script just to make this quicker. Okay. Okay. All right, there we go. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and jump over to our client side. So let me just share a different window really quick. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, is that showing up yet? Okay, awesome. Okay, so on this machine, uh, we can see that we've got some outdated apps. So for example, we've got uh, Google Chrome version 75 and we have Java 8 update 161. Okay. So since this was part of our pilot collection, uh, we have this showing up and it's scheduled to install tomorrow, right? Because that's when we set the deadline. But since we allowed this deployment to be visible in Software Center based on our deployment setting, that's why we're able to install it ahead of time. Okay. Oh, sorry, let me just add this back real quick. There we go. Um, so what we can see is uh, if I go ahead and open up Google Chrome, just to show you, we don't currently have any uh, custom homepage. It's just the standard Google Start page. Uh, if we look at the Google Chrome shortcut, we can also see that this is on the public desktop. So since we enable those right-click options to delete the shortcut, disable updates, and run the custom homepage script, what we should see is that once this update installs, oh, I keep dragging the wrong window. Let me, sorry about that. Let me add that back. So once this installs, uh, we're going to see all those customizations that took place. So um, while we're waiting for the installation to complete, I can show you some of the logging that's going on. So if you remember, we enabled the client logging for Google Chrome. So we can see that we just automatically created that folder. And now we have the MSI verbose logging for Google Chrome. So if you ever had to troubleshoot an update not installing, you would be able to look at the actual logs from the installer rather than just uh, looking at a generic exit code that you would see with SCCM. All right, now in addition to the vendor's log, we do also have a log file that's gonna be in the root of CCM logs called Patch My PC Script Runner. This is gonna show all the customization that's taking place whenever we're installing a patch or application. So for example, we can see that we, we ran the Google Chrome MSI. Uh, we can see that we automatically appended the logging switch based on the folder that we defined. So that's where you can see all those customizations taking place uh, within our log. So we can see that the update completed with a good exit code of zero. Uh, we then uh, delete the public desktop shortcut because we enable that right click option. We also will set three different registry values for Chrome that turns off the self update feature. And these are all gonna be logged out. And then kind of the last customization is that we ran that custom script that sets the home page, and we'll give you the exit code of any custom scripts that you may run within your update or app install. Okay, so we can now see that Google Chrome was updated. Uh, we can also see that that shortcut that was over here is now deleted because we enabled that option. So if we come back in and launch Google Chrome, we can see that we automatically configure the home page based on that custom PowerShell script. So just showing you how you can be very flexible 
if you have uh, any customizations that you need to apply, for example. Now, if we also go to the About tab of Chrome, we can see that we've now disabled the updates for Chrome globally based on that right-click option, and it would no longer self-update if you went into the About tab, for example. Okay, so that looks good for Chrome. Now uh, for Java, this one's also gonna be a little bit interesting. So if we look at Java, we can see that the self-update feature is currently enabled. So for example, if we go ahead and look at the registry, if we look at the Java update policy key, so if we come over here, look at the update policy, we can see that Java updates are currently enabled. So when we did our initial app deployment for Java, we didn't do anything custom to turn off the updates. So if we come in and look at the control panel, we can see that set to check for updates automatically. And we can see that in the taskbar down here, we also have a notification letting us know there's an update available. Now, if you remember, we enabled the option to auto close Java as well as disable updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. And what we're going to see is the Java control panel app is going to auto close as well as the notification for updates in the taskbar because we enabled that customization. We can also see all those processes getting closed within the main patch my PC log as well uh, based on that right click option. Now we can see that we're currently running the new Java update. So if we come back into our vendor logs, we can also see that we even have Java's exe installation log as well. Uh, that's showing up where you can see all the uh, installation perspective from that vendor's installer. So anytime here, we should see that, oh, let's do a look here. We should see that complete. So we got an exit code of zero, and then we went in and turned off the updates for Java. So if we come back in and refresh our registry key for the Java update policy, we can see that we automatically changed that to zero and then we also configured three additional reg values to turn off any notifications about updates. Okay. So if we were to come back into our Java control panel, we can even see that the update tab is now completely gone because we disabled that using that option. Okay. All right. And then lastly, um, what we'll look at is our application. So we can see that we don't currently have 7-zip installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kick that off as a app install. So we can see that we have, we even for 7-Zip, we did that custom name as well. So we can see that we have all that custom data. But if you did not do anything custom, you would get a lot more detailed info about the vendor, for example. Now, as far as the installation goes for applications, it does also use that same Patch My PC script runner log. So for example, we can see what's going on when 7-Zip is taking uh, place for the installation. So we can see the uh, installation file that we're running as well as the command line here for that application. Now, these could of course be installed through a task sequence as well if you wanted to use it during your initial imaging process. Okay, okay so that looks pretty much uh, like we've got everything good for this client. So if we refresh now, we can now see we have 7-Zip installed, and then we have Google Chrome or Java updated, and then we have Google Chrome also updated here. Okay. okay. So let me just jump back over to the server side. I'll show you some of the reporting options that we have here. Okay, so jumping back to our console, uh, let's go look at our software updates. So we can now see that we've already got some compliance coming back in, so that machine's now showing it's compliant. So you're gonna have all the native reporting within the uh, console. And in addition to all the default reports, so for example, any of the default software update compliance reports are gonna report for third-party patches directly in your SCCM console. Um, so any of these software update reports will also show third-party patch compliance because it uses the same mechanism. Now, a lot of the built-in reports, they're not, necessarily um, graphically intuitive, right? So there's not gonna be charts. Um, so sometimes they're not really the best reports if you wanna show your uh, patch compliance, like your management, for example. So within our publishing tool, we actually have the ability 
to install some SSRS dashboards. So just to show you where you would install the dashboards from, you can come into the advanced tab and then you can run the, the report installer. Um, so this would allow you to install the dashboards that I'm about to show you. Now, one thing to mention about these dashboards, um, these are actually completely free. So regardless of whether you're a customer or not, you can come in and install these dashboards. So um, these were initially created by a Microsoft consultant who did a blog post about reporting within SCCM. Um, so what we've essentially done is we've added support for some newer operating systems since his blog post. And we've also created our installer that can automate the installation and change all the URLs to match your SQL server as well as your site code. So it just makes the installation process a little bit easier. So yeah, so these are totally free regardless of whether you're our customer or not, you can install these within your environment to get better reporting. So this first one that we're looking at, it's gonna show you how many workstations that you manage, it's gonna show you how many servers that you manage, and then it's gonna start breaking out software update compliance by month for the last year. So for example, we can see the compliance for our workstations for the past year. Same thing for servers. So you can also see compliance for servers here. So for example, for the month of December, we can see that we have 331 instances of updates that are either compliant or required. And out of those 331, we're only 73% compliant. So if I click into that month, it's gonna show me uh, the number of updates that are missing on the most number of machines by default. So we're gonna sort by the number of required updates by default here. So for example, we can see that we're missing quite a few updates. Um, and if we look at the iTunes update, so we can see this iTunes update, this was actually one that we released today within our catalog. So we can see it was released uh, December uh, the 13th we can see that these are also both security updates. So for example, uh, if we come in and look at our release notes for this catalog update on the 13th, we can see it's that same iTunes update that just released today. So for example, um, our, our sync happened automatically, and then we started getting compliance data back within the same day that we had the patch, and we could potentially be um, patching these non-compliant security fixes uh, very, very quick after they release. Now, let's say that you wanted to get very specific and you wanna go find out what are those three machines that are missing that iTunes update. We can drill into that report and um, depending on how deep you go in, we may show you some native SCCM reports. So for example, uh, this is a native SCCM report that we link into from the dashboard. So from here, if you wanted to find those three specific machines, you have the ability to click in and go very detailed based on what updates or what computers that you wanna get compliance data from. Okay. Cool, so that's the dashboard. So we have just a variety of different dashboards. So we, the one that I just showed you, that's gonna show you Microsoft and third-party updates. You can also do just third-party updates if you only wanna see third-party app, compli app compliance. You can also filter by update groups and collections, just a, a variety of different ways you can filter these. Now, what's also really nice since that uh, the third-party patches uses the exact same reporting mechanism as Microsoft updates, that means that any existing dashboards or, or reports that you're using will work perfectly fine. So for example, this is actually the free Power BI dashboard available from Microsoft that you can use. So for example, when it comes to third-party updates, we could look at the update compliance tab and you can see that if we zoom in, in addition to all the Microsoft updates that you can see in this Power BI report, within this lab, we can see that we have a bunch of different third-party updates that are also reporting compliance on. You could also do different filters. So for example, let's say you only wanted to look at the updates with the critical severity level. We could filter by critical, and now we can see that it's just some Firefox and Java updates that are reporting as critical, for example. Okay. So Justin, sorry, uh, just, to, just to keep uh, the timings intact, um, so pro 
probably if we can kind of finish in 5 minutes or so is that is that okay with you yep nope i'm i'm actually done yeah so the reporting is oh okay uh, great yeah so the reporting is basically the last thing that i had to cover um the only other thing before we do some quick questions is just the pricing so uh, essentially uh for the top level that includes the sccm application feature it's $3 per device a year um, if you want to get a more detailed comparison about the different levels between the one, two, and three dollar option, you can just click that pricing chart, and that's going to show you all the features. So the biggest thing, if you want to use the SCCM app feature, that is part of the three dollar Enterprise Plus. Um, but outside of that, that's pretty much all I had. Um, the only other thing, if you wanted to get a live demo with your team, like if you wanted to see a demo like we're doing now. You do have the ability to come in and schedule a demo interactively on our website. And then if you just wanted to get pricing, you could just submit a quote directly from our site. Um, but outside of that, let's go ahead and open it up for any questions that you guys have. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Justin. It was an exciting and a very interesting session. Uh, I hope for all of us, right? Any, any questions? So, the, so Justin, there's a question um, that is there any option to roll back and what is the option to roll yeah. back the patches? Yeah, very, very good question. So um, there's no native rollback functionality within the software updates feature. Um, so that's really a limitation of SCCM. So for example, you can't even roll back Microsoft updates. But what's, what's cool though, is that since we also do applications, if you had an application created for a, uh, app, for a product that you wanted to roll back, we will kind of automatically fill in the uninstall command. So you could use an application to uninstall and revert back to an older one using something like Supersedence, for example, where if you wanted to go back to a previous app, you could do that using our applications. Okay, that's great. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Any other questions? Cloud ready product with independent. So yep, Justin, yep, we have. I heard that. that. I heard that. Um, oh, okay. So um, the the answer is today. It is uh, SCCM, but all, we're actively working on Intune support. Um, so it's something that we've already started uh, developing. So for example, if you come into our user voice, if you wanna get notified about our progress with Intune, you could simply vote this item up and then you would get an, an email whenever we go and ship it, for example. So we're making some pretty good progress with the graph API. Um, so hopefully we'll have a better option for Intune in the coming months, but uh, it's something we're actively working on and things are looking pretty good for our initial software development on it. Yep. Yeah, that's great stuff, Justin. Yep. Any any other further questions? Last question probably. Okay, I think Justin, we are fine. And thank you very much for your support as always. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody.